Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with a look at our Ag Commodity Trade. It's that time of the week where we welcome our in-studio guest. We have Chris Swift joining us. He's with Swift Commodities, of course, in Nashville. How are you? I'm doing very well, Marlon. And yourself today? It's it's a Monday in spades today, isn't Boy, it? Boy, I tell you, it's been some wild action overnight. Wow. Okay, let's dive into this market, and I can't wait to hear what you think about this. <laughs> Me All right, too. let's start with that corn market here this morning. I believe we opened that thing up about eight lower, and within, uh, gosh, it was like three or four minutes, it uh, went up to only two to three lower. Currently, September down two and three quarters at 396 and three quarters in December. New crop corn down three at 406 and a half. And uh, right now, kind of in the middle of our trading range from overnight. Let's look at the soybean trade. And right now on soybeans, we have September down nine and a quarter at 846 and a half. And November down eight and three quarters at 859 and three quarters. I'll put the brakes on right here. Okay. What's going on? Well, it started last week when we had uh, first was uh, the pre the uh, Federal Reserve lowered interest rates. Okay. That started to weaken our, excuse me, strengthen our U.S. dollar again. And then uh, within probably less than 24 hours, he comes out and puts an additional 10% tariff on it. And seemingly overnight, the Chinese has come out with a retaliatory of dropping their yuan down and devaluing their currency, uh, which has thrown some significant turmoil in the market. Markets this morning. Okay, we were doing a little bit of calculating earlier <clears throat> today, and uh, the corn is now within about 10 or 15 cents of where we were before planting time. All right. Went through all this rigmarole <laughs> and had that big rally and came back about, what, 75 cents, mm -hmm. almost 80 cents now, and um, it's like no weather premium at all. And, and I think we're going to wait and see what USDA says on Monday. Um, if USDA begin next Monday, if they begin yeah. to uh, converge some of the discrepancy between the private forecast and themselves, I think they'll have a pretty good leap at the very forefront. And then they may slow a little bit in converging the two. But I, I think if, if you were 100 percent wide, they may cut it by 25 percent the very first leg. I'm wondering about this afternoon's uh, crop the progress, progress report. report. Yeah, report. it's, um, it's going to be pretty interesting, too. At 58 percent, we're not knocking any home runs down at all for the good to excellent category. Do you think it'll decline? Uh, it would be a Maybe. little bit. I don't think it'd be a whole lot, but I, I think it might. I, I, probably the poor category, it would probably impact it the worst. The fair category dropping it down more so than the really good corn. The really good corn is outside the belt, and not that much has happened outside the belt. We with still the, have cool. With the, the big wild card next Monday? Do you mm -hmm. think there will be a lot of short covering this week? I think there will be some. I think you'll see a lot of volatility in the market. Um, there's more aspects to it than just this year's crop with this Chinese um, ordeal, for lack of a better word. Ordeal. Ordeal. Okay. <laughs> very very uh, polite. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the wheat market right now. And in uh, Chicago wheat, well, we're down four. We have September at 486 and three quarters. And uh, Kansas City, we're down a little bit. Uh, we have September down two and three quarters at 419. And Minneapolis, well, we have Minneapolis wheat just down a penny and a quarter. We're at 521 and three quarters. That's a look at how our grains are stacking up right now. We'll come back and we'll take a look at livestock when we come back right after this. And get yours today. <clears throat> And we're back with you. We're talking with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated, and he's based in Nashville. As we take a look at what's going on now in our livestock trade, let's go ahead and uh, bring up our live cattle prices first. Here we go, Chris. October down a buck twenty-eight at one hundred six fifty-five. Look at the range on that thing: one hundred seven forty-five to one hundred four eighty-five. Uh, right now, we're kind of caught in the middle here. Uh, December live cattle down ninety-three at one ten eighty-five. Moving on to our feeder cattle market. Feeders had huge losses Friday. Uh, they started out very, very weak here today, but they've moderated now. September feeders down a buck and a quarter at 136.97. That is already two dollars and forty cents off of our earlier low this morning. You talk about jumpiness. Uh, October down a dollar thirty now at 136.68. Then you have the lean hog trade, and on the lean hogs, we were limit down on a couple of months on Friday. And I should say standard limit down. That means we're in expanded limit mode now. And then now we're expanded limits lower uh, from December through April of next year, down four and a half bucks. The only ones trading are the nearbys, and we have October currently down 322 at 62.50. 
you can hear that giant crashing sound yeah. going on in the deferred lean hogs. Yeah. Why the deferreds? Can you explain that? Well, the front end is going to be tied to the lean hog index. The lean hog index has been moving a little bit higher, so uh, I think it's at 80, 81, something like that. So the August contract will expire to the uh, index there. October probably close enough to keep it from just rolling you know, too far away from it. But there's plenty of time for all the other back months to, to sell off there. But the cash cattle market last week was not that much different than the week before. Why are the futures taking it so hard? Well, 111 is what they traded the bulk at in the south. One uh, in north, they got a little bit higher for that, but not a whole lot. I think it's in reaction to the hogs. Um, if we unfortunately have to go into a fire sale type market in the hog market, cattle won't perform very well in that at all. And I think that's what we're, we're looking at. We've still got record number of cattle on feed. Um, we've got weights up there. We've got everything moving in a great direction except for now that we've got some issues with the hogs, and if the consumer doesn't like this equity market's decline, uh, they may start to contract a little bit in their discretionary spending. Well, I'm sure you saw it, but did you see the uh, the beef cutout values Friday afternoon? Uh, they were a little bit firmer, yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Let's take, <laughs> take a look at uh, what they had here on the uh, beef cutout values uh, Friday afternoon from USDA. Um, we actually had the choice cuts going up 49 cents. Selects were up $1.29. At 19063, and yet we keep selling the futures off. Yeah, that that doesn't seem to go together. Uh, it's just widening the margin. It shows you who's got the leverage, and right now the Packer has the leverage, and that's something that has been noted quite quite a while now. Is that uh, the Packer seems to have a considerable amount of leverage out there, and we just got a lot of beef on feed. So yeah. where's support in the cattle? Um, you know, it's probably quite a bit lower than where it is right here. Uh, we really? could we could go back down into the lows that we saw back in '16, where which were under a hundred dollars for fat cattle. Wow. And we're not that far. We're trading 105, 106 right now for the for the October August contract. So we're not far. Uh, you can go now. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dismissed. <laughs> Chris uh, Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated. He's located right here in Nashville. So uh, tough day on the livestock trade again, John. Well, I tell you, big, big sell up all the way across. Chris, always good to have you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Sure, appreciate it.